Hey, Changemakers, welcome back to the Engage for Good podcast. I'm your host, Allie Murphy, and I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season so far. Kohl's and Alliance for a Healthier Generation began their partnership shortly after Kohl's hit a plateau after opening 100 stores a year. The retailer was also transitioning its corporate social impact work from mothers and children to focusing in families in all of their forms. It was the perfect time in each organization's journey to partner. Alliance for a Healthier Generation's work was primarily done in schools at that point, and Kohl's was able to help the nonprofit expand beyond that to reach communities in multiple places. Their first initiative, Kohl's Healthy at Home, was a series of three campaigns that began in 2019, and it included a $2 million commitment. Their subsequent campaigns and $5 million commitment took lessons from their first year and the realities of a global pandemic to develop year-round content that reaches communities where they are, centers health equity, and focuses on BIPOC and historically marginalized communities. In today's episode, I'm joined by Kathy Higgins, CEO of Alliance for a Healthier Generation, and Tara Guider, Director of Community Relations at Kohl's, to talk about the inception of their partnership and how their campaigns and work have evolved over the years. In today's episode, we'll explore Kohl's CSR journey and transition to focus on families in all their forms, how the organizations expanded their resources to cater to BIPOC communities, the value of listening, which is a theme that comes up in almost every episode, insights into Cole's nonprofit vetting process, and Kathy and Tara's advice for building partnerships that center equity, diversity, and inclusion. And with that, let's get started. Hi, Kathy and Tara, and welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me. Kathy, would you start us off by telling us a little bit about yourself and where you focus the majority of your time at work? Yeah, no, I'm happy to. So um, trying to think about the um, uh, the, the, the uh, story on the short uh, elevator speech here, okay. but uh-huh. uh, probably most of my background has always been in public health and health education. And okay. also, um, you know, I think I feel like I've had all these experiences that have led to the CEO position. Um, but little did I know whether it was working in government and public health um, or working at Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina in corporate social responsibility, then creating their foundation. Um, I feel like really helped uh, get me ready for a position as a CEO of a national public health organization. And I think on a personal level, as part of a member of the LGBTQIA community, um, I think that really always thinking about how children and how people can be seen, how they can be supported to their full selves, um, how they can be supported to thrive, and how those environments can support them is, is really something that's always been part of my DNA. I love that. All right, Tara, what about you? Who are you? Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do at Colts. Yeah, I'm happy to. So um, I um, I lead the community relations team at Coles. The way that I always explain this to my grandmother is that we are. I love that. I know, <laughs> right? It's it's hard to have for people to wrap their heads around sometimes that this that a job like mine even exists. But I just tell her, I'm like, if there's any good done or money given. Um, it flows through uh, my team's area of responsibility. Um, so for those of us that are that know a little bit more, that just means any giving to a 501c3 um, nonprofit that we do. Um, you know, for me and, and Kathy, I love your story. We, you've shared that with me a, a few times and your your background is so interesting. You've kind of done a lot of different things. Um, for me, um, I grew up in a really tiny farming community in Illinois. So I actually grew up on it. My, my grandparents owned a dairy farm. Um, my parents actually owned a business in our in our small community of 600 people. Yes, 600. Wow. That's right. <laughs> um, and you know the 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 culture in that community was always that of helping. And so I think you know as I grew up, you know helping helping neighbors, getting involved in the community was it was always a staple. And so that's something that has really stuck with me. And then you know my junior year of college, I had the opportunity to do an internship with Colt with Coles, and came across this community relation things, which, which growing up where I did, I never even imagined that a job like mine existed in the world. And so I just, I, I love what I do. And I, I just, I'm, I'm humbled because it's something that I wouldn't have never imagined I would have had the opportunity to do, but it very much aligns 
um, with my core values and how I was raised in, in, in my little tiny town. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So your teams have built a really neat partnership that's changed a lot over the years. And I'm sure you've learned a lot of things along the way. Before we get into some of the campaign specifics, what you learned and your advice for listeners, I want to backtrack all the way the, to the beginning. So Kathy, how did you get to the point of actually being partners? I understand it had something to do with your CMO, some networking, and maybe some other components. Mm -hmm. But for listeners who want to say, how do I land a corporate partner? How did you do it? Yeah, um, I think originally, as you mentioned, our, our chief marketing officer was able to be in conversation with uh, the folks at Kohl's. And so it really allowed us then through conversation to start building that relationship. And I think what we always find is if we can just be intent on listening and learning about what, um, in this case, Kohl's community impact, community um, reputation and community goals, what they stood mm -hmm. for, we could also then communicate back to them uh, what our mission was all about and is all about and how those things align. And just being not only true to ourselves, but true to our this potential partner uh, and, and what, what the possibilities were that we could do together, I think got us really started off on a great foot because it seemed uh, and the intention there was to be authentic together. I think that's such a good point. And I'm excited to dive into more of the specifics. But I'm also curious. I know some partnerships are build, built because somebody already had a relationship. Some are built because somebody sent a cold email. Do you remember how this piece started at all? I don't necessarily remember the very first contact, but I do remember just where we were as an organization at the time. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, this, this gets into some of the background of Kohl's, but for a lot of years, you know, um, our focus or our target customer is around, you know, moms with kids. And we were focusing on, from a philanthropic perspective, we were focusing on kids' health and education because, right, mom with kids, we care that my, that our kids are healthy and that, you know, they're right. getting their, a good education. Um but our organization was shifting, you know, we had been growing like crazy, opening a hundred stores a year. Um, wow. and, and, you know, started to, to plateau a bit in terms of our, our business. And so we, the organization made a strategic shift, stepping away from, you know, mom with kids and, and shifting more to families, which I think really paid tribute to how, you know, households had, had evolved over the years. It used to be a mom and a dad and, you know, a kid and a dog and the white, <laughs> white picket fence yes. uh, image. Right. Um, but that, I mean, that, that's not what households look like. Like I, myself, I live alone with, with my, I'm divorced and I live alone with, with my daughter and, um, you know, Kathy, for you being a part of the LGBTQ community, certainly your household isn't a mom and a dad and a, and a child, you know? So, um, I think that that shift really played tribute to that. And as a part of that, we evolved our philanthropic strategy to support mm -hmm. family health and wellness. And so we were at the point that we reached out to healthier generation, we were, we had done lots and lots of research because we were looking for organizations that that focused on, you know, sort of the, the traditional sense of health and wellness. So, you know, physical health, nutrition, being active, um, and also organizations that touched on, on mental health because we were um, feeling that that was something that was growing and, and, you know, we couldn't have anticipated how much that was going to grow right. thanks to the, a global pandemic. Um but we we identified Healthier Generation as an organization that was, you know, really sort of up and coming and doing doing some pretty cool work that was very, you know, palatable for families, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, engaged in a conversation and, you know, I think the rest is sort of history. And I think we'll probably talk more about, you know, how that relationship evolved over time. But it yeah. really, we were really at a transition point and found Healthier Generation. And, and I think, you know, it kind of evolved from there. Okay, I want to dive into this piece a little bit more. You talked about the journey from kind of 100 stores a year to plateauing mothers to families. I think one of the biggest factors that enhances a nonprofit's ability to secure a corporate partner is understanding the partner's needs. In your eyes, and maybe, Kathy, you can add on afterwards, but how did Alliance for Healthier Generation make this happen? 
Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for us, uh, you know, we, we have a pretty healthy um, vetting process that we do before we even, mm-hmm. you know, reach out to an organization. And there's, you know, there's a long list of things that are important um, when we do that. And, you know, some of it's real basic, like, are they in good financial standing? Do they right. have a good reputation, right? Like all those things. Um, but I think more importantly, it's digging into the work. What is the work um how does that touch, you know, our, our, the families that we serve as an organization? How is it even applicable to, you know, associates that, that work or employees that work for us? Um, and, and Alliance really had it all. And then I think, I think the other thing that was really sort of magical around um, finding Alliance when we, our healthier generation, when we did was we really were able to get in on the ground floor of the great work that they do. And we were able to bring funding to the table to help them broaden what they were doing. So, you know, I think okay. Kathy and Kathy, you'll, you'll be, you'll speak to this better than, than I will. But I think when we first came in, the, the vast majority of your work was happening within school systems. And you guys had strategies in place to say, we can't just work on this and these issues in schools, like mom and dad ha- and parents have to be informed too. And I think, you know, as, as you know, people who have worked in this field for a long time, we know that if you've got the whole family, that's when, you know, uh, our children have the best chance of being successful. And so to be able to come in at that moment, add that new, the funding to support that new strategy, I just, I feel like the growth of the organization has, has just exploded. And we've certainly seen that in the last couple of years. Yeah. It, I mean, the timing was everything and maybe it's the whole dream come true <laughs> uh, for us to be able to truly be able to partner with Coles because um, it was it was actually in my first board mm-hmm. meeting um, when I came on board in 2019, where we been talking about the need for us to have the support and the strategy and the funding and the collaboration in place to reach families, as Tara mentioned, was just so critical because we did have we were so deep in so many schools across the country um, and doing, again, this incredible systems change work to create environments so that uh, children could uh, be exposed to more health related opportunities. But at, but the missing uh, piece to the stool or the missing line there was, was this outreach to families. And it was um, so that was beautiful alignment. This is where mm-hmm. we needed to go from a strategic, almost innovative standpoint. And then here we were in conversations with, uh, a, you know, a national retailer that that was saying we too need to to reach families, and as you know, as Tara explained that, and um, their definition of family w- um, was so broad, which is she's perfect. You know, my household is two moms mm-hmm. and four boys, mm-hmm. so and two dogs, so um, you know we're. Um, you know, we're just different from what people used to think, but we're absolutely normal in terms of where we are today. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about the campaign. Kathy, what did the first iteration of the campaign look like? You know, the other thing that happens when you're working with, um, you know, a strategic partner like Coles is, you know, you're doing all this work and you get to the green light and boy, everyone's ready to move forward fast. And so uh, we actually designed three campaigns, um, eating healthy at home, moving more at home and feeling healthy at home. Um, and which, uh, you know, which we targeted at, you know, different times of the year to implementing those. And that was, as I mentioned, we launched together like April of, um, 2019. If you think about a one year cycle that brought us to 2020. And the global pandemic, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we recognize that here we have family. You know how schools went virtual, how children are now at home, and even I mean this work, it was so, it was even more important. It, it was always important. It was even more important because how could we make sure that families had the tools, the resources that they needed to recognize how to support the holistic health of their family, and so. Um, that's how we got started originally. To do that in an environment where no one knows what it looks like, how long we're going to be in this space or how to really do that. Oh, my gosh. OK, yeah. so talk, Tara, talk to us a little bit about how did you partner together to bring this first iteration of three campaigns to life? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, a typical pro is probably too process based, but I think just, just to touch on how we approach a partner. So once we've, you know, kind of vetted and validated, you know, a partner being right for us, um, we go into a pretty detailed, you know, proposal process just to understand mm-hmm. what their needs are, um, how that aligns with what we're trying to accomplish. So we went through that process, but I will say, I think there's a couple of things and this is where I really think this is the special sauce and kind of the magic that happens specifically with our relationship with Alliance. I think, you know, listening and sort of constant evolution have been just so incredibly and critically important to what we've accomplished, especially going through a first iteration. There's that you're never going to get it perfect right out the gate. And you shouldn't Um, expect to. And then, you know, heading into the pandemic, you know, the, the world changed, right? The world changed. And so, you know, I think for us really listening to what our partners are trying to accomplish, what their needs are, being receptive to and and positively accepting feedback when things aren't working and being able to figure mm-hmm. that out um, together. And then that, you know, that kind of segues us into this. We are always with all of our partners on in this constant, you know, kind of evaluation process. Like we're always looking at the results, seeing what's going on, looking at what's happening in the world around us. And so, you know, even when we first started and, you know, I think Kathy will probably talk about this uh, more in a bit, but you know, it was really like physical well-being was a lot of what the focus was about. And as we right. went into the pandemic, you know, mental health started to be a bigger thing that we needed to talk about because that was what was, you know, when these kids are isolated and at home and not going through the normal day-to-day of what a school day brings, um, you know, mental health became a real issue. And so I think, you know, what's magic about our partnership is there is this great relationship, this amazing collaboration that allows us to hear the good, bad, and the ugly and figure it out to figure it out together. And I think that is really the signal of an amazing partnership. Okay, so you mentioned evolution, kind of lessons learned. Kathy, I want to turn this over to you. What are some of the things that you learned from the first iteration? Yeah, I I love it. Uh, Tara touched on this aspect of um, how families really needed the resources um, that would be ready for them at their fingertips, Mm -hmm. on the go, um, that would support them in in all sorts of ways, but especially the social emotional health of their family as we were all, you know, just dealing with this isolation and really this global uh, unknown for everybody from a day-to-day standpoint. Um, And then how families' lives were changing, whether that was um, the family being able to access employment, Mm -hmm. whether it was being able to put food on the table, whether it was um, having to go to a local food pantry to get food and really helping them in a number of ways. The other way was how did we expand um, on our work to, from just uh, to be uh, uh, supportive of creating content in Spanish mm-hmm. as well as English was another way to just reach more families. But giving them the tools and the resources, thinking about them being home, you know, the 24-7, right. um, allowing them to do physical activity uh, events, you know, indoors and outdoors, uh, coming up with things like nature bingo, so we could really get people outdoors and maybe uh, into on, onto walking trails, uh, and really how then we started to think about how to move forward with multimedia formats to really enhance accessibility uh, as well. But we we emphasized as we grew our partnership together the social emotional benefits of even just simple nutrition, physical activity, right. and family family bonding tips that were really necessary to connect family with families with our resources. So Tara, how did some of those learnings and any others that you might want to add influence the following year's initiatives? Because I think I understand that things looked a little bit different the next year and there were reasons behind that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think as I, you know, kind of talked about earlier, you know, we're always in this constant state of of evaluation and you never get it perfect right off the bat. Right. So there were definitely some learnings that that came out of the first year that I think, you know, greatly influenced what we did in in the second year. And that was an an expanded partnership. It was, you know, a $5 million commitment versus a $2 million commitment. Mm -hmm. So clearly, clearly we believe strongly in what they were doing, (laughs) what they were doing. So, um, but I think, you know, I think actually as the as we evolved into the second iteration of this, you know, certainly we applied the learnings from the 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 
existing execution, but a, a lot had changed in the world. And so this is at a point where the diversity, ec- equity, and inclusion conversation had had really exploded. And so I think the biggest evolution that we saw in, in our second term was reaching the importance of reaching those communities and sort of addressing mm-hmm. health health equity more head on than than we um, had before. And you know, I. It, to to pay Kathy a compliment, she doesn't like it when I do this, but um, <laughs> I think she was really instrumental in that. And and because of you know who you are and your background, Kathy, I think you had a whole different perspective on why that was um, in, important. And so I mean that was great. And then you know the the topics obviously evolved um, to just see what was going. So I think for us for this partnership especially. To me, it's less about, you know, what did we learn from, you know, year to year or Mm -hmm. or initiative to initiative? That's certainly important. And we take that into consideration. I think it's more about what are the needs of our families um, and how do we how do we, you know, shift and, and, you know, show agility to be able to respond um, to to those needs. And, you know, Kathy and her team are so incredibly passionate about their work. Um, you know, it's it's always inspirational to see the pulse that they have on on what's going on around them and what the needs of the families are. And then, I think too, one of the things that Alliance does so well is, you know, as a I'm a parent, I have a 14 year old daughter, and you know, I help had to help her navigate a pandemic in essentially yeah. middle middle school, which is such a complicated, oh gosh, yeah, such a complicated period of life, and. I feel like they're, they're very, you know, very formative year, formative years. And, you know, as a parent, you're kind of at a loss for like, where do I find the support that I need? And it seems, it seems so overwhelming sometimes. And, you know, where I think Alliance really shows up well is these resources are, they're not overwhelming. They're not complicated. They're fun. They're, you know, they're easy to use. And it's, you know, taking these really complicated, overwhelming topics for parents and creating simple resources in uh, that, get to the core of it, but also get to it in a way where like, it doesn't feel like you're talking to your child about mental health. You're just having a fun conversation, but you can, right. but you kind of get to the meat of that. And I think that's, to me, that's really the strength of what we've created together here. Tara, I would agree with that too. And I also think that we learned so much in the first year, the first year and a mm-hmm. half, and we were able to see what resources yeah. resonated with families and, and then we were also able to think through how do we go deeper in under-resourced communities? How do we go deeper with BIPOC uh, families and communities? And it really um, made us think, too, about the timing of our, let's say, our right. campaigns. Mm-hmm. And, and we know that, you know, more was needed around social-emotional mm-hmm. health, perhaps even around the holidays. Mm-hmm. That's just one example. And so we were able to make sure that we were targeting or flexing with our campaigns in a way that we thought would meet families, you know, the whole notion of where they are and what they needed most um, brought to their attention. And I think one of the important things to point out here is we're talking about timing of campaigns is you're working on timing that makes sense for your audience, but you're not only doing this in that specific period of time, you're working on these pieces year round. And I think that's one of the components that shows a really strong cause campaign is you can't just do it during Black History Month or Hispanic Heritage Month. That's really about the year round involvement. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. And um, and communities expect year round involvement. That's right. how they exist and live in the world. They just don't want to be targeted for 30 days on one, you know, on some subject based on they really want you to meet their needs uh, throughout the year so that when they want to tap into the resources, they're readily available and they know that they're there. And they have the confidence that they can trust in the campaign and the work that we're doing together. I think the other thing that I think the other thing that's so critically important about this work is is how we target some of these families too, especially as we you know took a step forward into you know addressing you know BIPOC and, and health equity. The way that you reach you know say an underserved African American community compared to how you serve you know a Caucasian or even you know Hispanic community are very different. It is very different, mm-hmm. and so I think you know, getting creative and smarter about how we get these resources to those families and, and, and meet them, meet them where they're at. Um, that is, you know, you can have all the resources available in the, in the world, but if you're not putting it in the right place for people to see it and engage with them, it just doesn't, it just doesn't doesn't work. work. Yeah. Okay. So I want to transition into your advice a little bit. So Tara, you're talking about these different components. (laughs) 
if you had to pick three pieces of advice, maybe it's two, maybe it's four, but if you had to pick three pieces of advice, what would you tell listeners about developing a robust partnership that centers equity, diversity, and inclusion? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the you know magic sauce to any partnership is you know doing doing the research and, and building the relationship. So you know, I think you know really taking the time to find the right partner that's going to address what you are trying to address and, and, and kits on the focus that you're trying to focus on. So I think, you know, I, I have lots of peers that, that I, that I work with, have worked with over the years. And I think many, you know, sort of often engage without having done all of that research. And I just mm-hmm. think, you know, being empowered with knowledge before you even, you know, reach out and have a conversation is so um, very important. And then being really open and honest in that conversation when you have it, like ask the tough questions, you know, challenge, challenge the thinking, um, you know, for, force the issues that are important to you. And, and I mean, to some degree, that's a real pressure test. Right. And, right. um, then I think, you know, I think the last piece, you know, the, the work will happen. And this is where I think Kathy and my teams are just tremendous together is the the collaborative and, and true partnership relationship that we've created. I mean, we were joking at a, a meeting earlier this week that like our teams share like wedding photo, photos back and forth. Um, we I have, love that. Like things like that. So just really, you know, you know, almost almost becoming friends and and being able to, you know, lower the guard a little bit and challenge, challenge Mm -hmm. the, challenge the thinking. And I think that relationship is just so powerful because it really enables that collaboration and authenticity. Um, And, you know, the, you know, I think what Kathy's team really brings to the table in this relationship specifically is passion. Like I have not seen a team who is quite as passionate about top about yeah. this topic as her team is. And as such, they're like coming forward all the time with new ideas and new thinking. And could we try this? Could we do this? And um, to me, that's the, the, the relationship that our teams have is really the foundation for everything else. We've touched on these, but they're worth repeating. And one is building a trusting relationship really, really matters. And that, um, and that in doing that, um, you know, we're aligning with an organization that puts a high value on innovation. And if you put a high value on innovation, then that means that that you want your the organization you're partnering with to ideate in a way that allows you to also to take mm-hmm. risks. And it means that the trust is that sometimes things don't work right. out or sometimes things fail. But if the whole notion of fail fast. Um, that you're you're ba- you're basing everything on trusting relationship, so you're really able to figure out what works and what doesn't mm-hmm. work. Um, we both have a commitment um, uh, into the evidence based or as evidence informed programmatic work, and so we're lo- always looking to make sure that we know what works best for the families. And then the the third bucket or the third thing that I, I think I'd love to speak to, which was already mentioned, but the passion that we both have together. And I love that Tara uh, uh, brought up that while we're in relationships together and care about one another and care about the work so much that we really push each other. And so that that really speaks to a solid partnership when when you can have those hard conversations or uh with one another, as well as just really sort of driving for excellence mm-hmm. together. And it means that it's a, it's really a give and take uh, relationship. And I think, you know, that that's what we value so much about our work with Coles. I don't think the value of listening can be overstated either on both, mm-hmm. on both sides. You know, I'll speak to that on the corporate side of it, you know, in big corporations like Coles, you tend to be very structured and strategic and planful and, and not that you aren't on the nonprofit side, certainly you are, Kathy. But I think sometimes how that shows up in these kinds of relationships, it shows up as like partner, you need this, 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 and this in order to to fit right. our mold. And you know, when I stepped into the role that I'm in now, it was really important to me that we did some of that in our early days. And I think as I stepped into this role, it was really important to me that we found a better balance there. And I think we actually have gone farther on the side of like listening and trusting the partner than I thought we would would have. But not only with, you know, our partnership with Healthier Generation, really across all of our partnerships, the uh, how that has enabled broader impact by just trusting the experts and the partners to know what they're doing. I just, I really just don't think you can overstate the value of listening um, 
and really taking the advice of the people who are, you know, sort of boots on the ground. Almost regardless of what conversation I'm having on the podcast, whether it's on the corporate side, the nonprofit side, regardless of cause area, listening and building a relationship based on trust are two themes that cross pretty much everything from disaster relief to what you're working on and kind of everything in between. So I think that's a really good point to to bring up and to focus on. Yeah, it's so it's so it's so fundamental, but I think sometimes we get so in our own heads right. and our own like check the box of what we need to do that we you know some of those real basic like just human things yep. <laughs> get get set yep. to the side sometimes. Absolutely. Well, there are so many pieces that I feel like we could still dive into, but we have come to the end of our time for today. So, Kathy, where can people learn more about Alliance for Healthier Generation if they'd like to do that? Sure. And we would love for them to do that. So our website is www.healthiergeneration.org. And then on social media, our Facebook and Instagram handle is Healthier Generation. And on Twitter, it is Healthier Gen. And we'd love to visit people uh, anywhere in the social media world that they want to visit with us. Wonderful. And Tara, what about Kohl's? Yeah. Um, so our corporate website is probably the best resource for in- information on uh, what we do in the community, which is corporate.kohl's.com. I'm going to say that again, corporate.kohl's.com. Um, you can also access that through kohl's.com, which is our e-commerce site as well. It's just a little, it's a little, it's a little bit of a date. So, so I would definitely use that first one um, as well. And then, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you, Kathy, but I always love to talk to people about this stuff. I think I love sharing my knowledge. I love talking about the great partnerships that we have. So, um, you know, Ali, if there's ever someone interested in more detail about uh, what we do at Kohl's, please feel free to send them my way. I'm always happy to, to share what I know. Absolutely. That sounds good. Well, we will include all of those links in the show notes, which you can find at engageforgood.com. Kathy and Tara, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you to all of our listeners for joining us. And we'll see you on the next podcast. The Engage for Good podcast is produced in partnership with True Story FM, engineering by Pete Wright. Music this week is by Simo and Rex Banner. If your podcast app allows ratings and reviews, we hope you'll consider doing just that for our show. But the best thing you can do to support Engage for Good is simply to share the show with a friend or colleague. Thank you for listening.